Today is a very sad day for Ari Crown. Chicago Jewish community, and truly for all of Klai Yisrael. We have come together, entering a building that he established, coming through halls, which his picture graces, the graduating pictures, 40 years, into a room that was dedicated to him. We have come here to give Kabbat Achrein to our beloved and revered Rebbe, Harav Meir, and Harav Yosef, Rabbi Meir Shapiro Zecher Tzadik Lubrocha. The Maspidim today will be Rabbi Moshe Shimon Shapiro, Rabbi Shishiva Eitzchayim Lakewood, New Jersey, brother of the Nifter. Rabbi Shmuel first, Dayan of Agudas Yisrael, Chicago, Illinois. Rabbi Benjamin Newman, Morada Asra, Kahal Adas, B'nai Yisrael. Rabbi Yaakov Bender, Shishiva Yeshiva Starche Teira, Farakwe, New York, and cousin to the Nifter. Rabbi Hilla Shapiro, a son. Rabbi Shmuel Sutton, and now Yeshiva Da Teira Torah, Brooklyn, New York, son in law. Rabbi Yehuda Sutton, grandson of Moshe Sutton, grandson. And I'll be concluding at the end with my words. Friend, <laughs> I am a man and the Lord is the one who is the one 
Can't 
Alam Mok Zelda, Moloch Hashem. Als was so ort, ort er von dem. Als was so ort, ort er von dem. Mein Mann hat mir einmal gesagt, wenn meine Mann ist, nach Pittsburgh gewohnt in Montreal, zum Garten, ein kleines Stück, ein Dier. Und der Mäh ist noch geworden. So ich bin schon alt und da, so ich habe vor dem Chizuk. Der Mäh ist ein Tor gegangen, so sehr. Ich bin übergenächtigt. Da hat er gesagt, er will ruhig schlafen, ruhig schlafen in den selben Häus. Mann ist ein, aber es ist eine Tat im Mann. Wir haben gesagt, ich schlage ihn dort. Ich schlage ihn zwei Betten, eine ganze, eine kleine Schicke, ich schlage zwei Betten. Ich habe Besatzungen bei meinen Schwestern sein gesagt. Dort können wir nicht schlafen. Ich schlafe normal. Ich habe gesagt, nein, ich muss schlafen da. Ich muss schlafen auf dem Floor. Ich muss mal eine Seite hat im Mann. Und noch ein bisschen mal eine Seite. Ich habe geschlafen auf dem Floor. Und mein Mann hat gesagt, nein, das ist gar nicht. I <laughs> 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 Er nicht gewinnt klar, was der zweite Wort ist gewinnt. Oder es gewinnt nicht klar, oder es gewinnt nicht klar. Und das ist eine Firma genug. Das ist der Typ Effekt. Das heißt, du wirst ein Typ, hat gesagt, der Affär. Oder hat gesagt, er ist ein Zadik und nicht klar. Oder hat gesagt, er ist ein Zadik und nicht klar. In post Mit der Vorplanung von den Iftach. Ein mit der Vorplanung, sei mir durchs Teufel, was sie können hat, lehaft mich. Und das wird sein für immer so gut. Junge, du, ich schaue ihm da, okay. So we zijn aan mij wit joisje. Van zijn ganse gosje wie me spoog. En vader. Ik wil hem over het land net zeggen. Mocht we als je het wel ook in die mama koppen niet. Die nooit meer op mij.
<clears throat> We're all coming today to give Kavod Achren to Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yosef. We in Chicago have lost a great and special person. Chai Yisrael, who is always Zeichet Hav Daily Yisrael, who led Chai Yisrael. They were known for the godless Batayra. But Chai Yisrael also had Gedalim, and Midas Tavis, and Yerushimayim. Rabbi Shapiro was one of them. As Prince of Eric Crown for 40 years, all the students saw a living role model of how a youth has to live. It was also a role model for our community, how a youth has to live. He was a Tamus of Hatzel Lechus and Hashem Kacha, and he was a walking Kiddush Hashem. He was a super Bab Mechanech, which was known famously throughout the United States. He understood children. He knew how to deal with them, and bring out the best of them. He loved the students, and they in turn all loved him. Many of the teachers now are crowned. He trained them how to be better in their job. His teachers always loved him and never heard a bad word about him from anybody, especially from his teachers. Rabbi Shapiro was not only helping the children of Eric Crown, but children from other schools as well. I myself sent him numerous children who didn't want to a crown for his guidance. And he helped many families tell them how to train, how to work together with their children. Even after he retired from Mary Crown, he was still involved and gave aids to many families how to deal with their children. Many families, because of Rabbi Shapiro, are today Shemitah Mitzvahs. Because he accepted children from non Shabbat ho Shabbos homes. Not only did the children become Shemit Shabbos, but many of their parents also became Shemit Shabbos through their children. It was the warmth and love that Rabbi Shapiro gave to everybody. Rabbi Shapiro, I personally considered all these years as one of the, the early year. When I used to meet with him occasionally, when Rabbi Shapiro walked into the room, I would stood up for him, all like Kamasai. Then he begged me, please, his Anivis, please do not do it anymore. This was Rabbi Shapiro. Rabbi Shapiro was Zeicha to an Ashish Chayo who stood by his side all the years they were married. And together they helped build a family, a beautiful Kehila, for 40 years. Rabbi Shapiro, Zeicha Tzadok of Racha, and your brother Chaim, Rabbitson Shapiro, was Zeicha to two wonderful children. Hello, is a Ben Taira, who's always holding and learning. And is a constant Mavakesh for the Emmis. Naomi, who is a Revitz in her own right, was Zeicha to marry a big time of who is today Manal, and one of the Chashim and Meisters in New York. Both Hill and Naomi have children, all Ben Taira, going in the Derech, 
that their parents and grandparents are proud of them, and they are proud of them. Now we are saying goodbye to Rabbi Shapiro. We can say that what Rashi says in the beginning of the Pasha, it's his tzaddik when I'm okay, I serve A tzaddik leaves from his city and makes an impression. She's a man at tzaddik here, who hide It's his glory, who ziva, it's his splendor. Who hide his crown. Yatsu misham, pana hide, pana ziva, pana hide. When he leaves that city, and by us he's leaving for good. It's a loss which is not replaceable. But for Rabbi Shapiro, we can say what the Baturim and Das Kainim say. That from beginning of Pashas for Yetze, until Milva Ishlach, it's a Pasha Stuma. So as for Magdashim say, why is it Pasha Stuma? From the time he left, Pasha Vayetze, until until Mil Pasha Yishra, when he comes back to his father in Canaan. So Swamak Dashim say that Yankee Vavino, who's 14 years in, in, in Shiva Shem Vaheva, he grew to be Yankee Vavino through being in Gullus. I love him, whoever he was, being in Gullus. He was all the years the same Yanka Vavino. He did not change the Pasha Stuma. The same Yanka Vavino learned his place to Shev and Behega. The same Yanka Vavino came back to his father after being in Beis Lavan. Rabbi Shapiro came from Tevadas, which is Rabbi Mubek of Yankov Kamnesi, was his Rabbi, was his mentor. And he told me whenever he had a problem, as long as Yanki was alive, that was my phone on my cold. Yes, he was Shalom with Terasai, Shalom with Gufai. He could come in front of Kisi Akavid and show the Rabbinah Shalom all his great accomplishments. They accomplish in this world. Rabbi Shapiro should be a male to Yasha. For his age is Chayel. The Rebbeton. And for all his, his children, Hila and Nomi. And to all his grandchildren, great grandchildren. Should be a male to for his school, Larry Crown. Which he gave his whole life to. The Chicago community. Bila Mavas, Netach, Mochash, Dimon, Akoponon. Yizik, Rebbeoroch. Very difficult to be masked with somebody who I revered so much. I was together with him for so many years in the shul. He was a role model not just for this Talmudim, he was a role model for myself in his Anagas, his whole Matthias, his whole Ishi Yusai, his whole essence was something to watch and to learn from. An individual that I think the Pasuk Mitzvah Chaim Vesechel Tai Baini Lakim Ba'adam is so tsukapast. Chaim from the Midas Taivas, the Rebbeinu Yaina says, and the Chesed that he does, and the Sechel Tai of the Yashvus, how much Yashir he had in understanding and looking through an Indian. Somebody who was Mechanech, I'm sure it was well over a thousand Talmidim and Talmidais. Mashpia and his community, 
Mashpi on his family, the Baruch Hashem Bilyayin Har, together with his Aishas Chao, with the Rebbets in Shapiro, were able to be Maibah and Mashpacha Mufuaro Bekla Yisrael. And we're here standing here to be Mahasbidim. What an Aveda, what a loss. And I think that the way we know it's Be'enei Elohim V'adam, how do we know it's Be'enei Elohim? The Mishnah Nova says, I believe it was Reb Hanina ben Doisa, there's Kol Shavruach HaBriyas Neich HaMenu, Ruach HaMokim Neich HaMenu. And there's the Poshav Shat and then Mishnah Nova, and then there's the Mahalach of the Chaybas HaVavas, whether it's a Simon or a Siba. The Velt learns Kol Shavruach HaBriyas Neich HaMenu, is a Siba, is a reason for the Rabbi Nishalaylam to be Neich HaMenu. Chaybas HaVavas says that it's a Simon, the raya that a person is friendly with everybody, that it's a ruach habriya, it's naicha menu, is if you, if the rabbi shalom is naicha menu, so the rabbi shalom makes that everybody likes him. There wasn't an individual that didn't like him, as was said before, and there wasn't an individual that spoke negative about him. And certainly in the position that he was in, he had to make sometimes hard decisions which didn't please everyone. But nonetheless, everybody loved him because they knew who he was and what he stood for. Someone that accomplished so much, how are we must with such an individual? How do we understand that? How do we relate to the Aveda, to the loss? Over the last Takufa, when he was so sick, and I would sometimes call him on the phone and to hear his weak voice. But now we don't even have a weak voice. We don't have the moose in front of us. The Gemara might cut in Darshan's Apostolic. Might exceed what does it mean? Kisif say kain yishmer das v'tayr asa v'tayr yivak shem bepiv kimal Hashem tzvok aisu. How do we know who to learn what? Learn from? Who's considered a Rebbe? Who's considered that? What is the right way? So Chazal Darshan from this Apostolic. Im day my Rav l'mal Hashem tzvok ais. If the Rav is compared to l'mal Hashem, so then yivak shem bepiv then you should learn from him. What does that mean that if he's doim l'malach? And I heard from my Rashivas, Zechrein Lebracha, Rabbi Levine, two mahalchim to explain what it means malach. There are many more mahalchim. One mahalach he used to say is that we know Kein Tzadik Bar, it's a yasatayim v'layachta. Nobody's perfect. But to be makabal or rab, you have to be able to look at the person and imagine that he's a malach Hashem Tzvokais. Not everyone, even if they're seemingly perfect, can you look at them as a Mal Hashem Tzvokais? Rabbi Shapiro was a Mal Hashem Tzvokais. Everybody saw it. Everybody felt that. And then there's another message in Mal Hashem Tzvokais. A Mal is on a Shlichus from the Ebishter. And Tetzushtel Avort from the Rashiva Rav El Yemeir Zechrein of Rocha used to say on the Pasuk, Hu Maisha, Hu Maisha Va'arayim. So Bishleim Mitzit Kosam, you understand, he was a tzaddik from the beginning ten. But what does it mean on a shlichus? Because the Teva Dvarim is that when a person gets involved with an Indian, even L'Shem Shemayim, but after a while it becomes my parsha, it becomes my Indian. Hein Bishlichusam Mitzit Kosam, from the beginning ten, it was also shlichus. Everything he did was not for himself. And if I may say, he, everything that he did wasn't for every crown. It was for Klai Yisrael, it was for the Talmudim. A chavra of mine told me that one time he had a big shayla in Chinuch. He had two children, they were one grade apart. And the older one had difficulties managing the class and was deficient in certain things they recommended to hold that child back. The problem was they had a child in the younger grade, which was Lahepech, was ready to advance and maybe even skip. Which one are you mevater for the others? You hold back and hold them both back or move them both up? What is the right way? And he went to Rashiva Rabbi Levin Zechran Levrach and asked him. He says, there's one person that can answer that Shiloh, and that's Rabbi Shapiro. And he went to Rabbi Shapiro Zechran Levrach and he asked him the Shiloh. He says, let me meet your younger child. And he met with the child for a little while to see Mativa, what she was about. And then he came over and he says, I have an Eitzah for you. Said he learned he, this person had their children in another school in the city. And he said, send your 
younger one to my school for one year, and then afterwards you'll go back to your Maisid. And that, at least that will be enough of a change in the Shinui that she feels that something is changing while you hold back the older one. Something that he was using his school to help Yenim, because it was never about anybody but his avoided to Rabbi Shalom and his shlichos. How many times I heard from him that he was macabre different things from Hagayin Rabbi Yankov, Zichron Levracha. Hein mishlichusan mitchila batzayv. And if I may say, it's also mitzitchusan mitchila batzayv. That was Rabbi Shapiro. As we stand here giving Kavad Achrayim, very hard to, uh, it's a very hard to. The Rabbi Shalom, Shebench us that we should be zeichet to go in his ways, which will be, like mentioned before, in the biggest schus and ilui for his neshama. And it will be a big schus for ourselves to have that dogma in front of us to remember what Harav Reb Meir, Ben Reb Yosef, was to us and what he meant to us. And the most night just to look at the opponent and to see his anivis was Ein Shire. When I first came into the shul and he was there for many years, and he was old enough to be my father, and I had such a derech heritage for him. I tried to let him go in front of me. There was no such thing. He would march around the other side of the base medrash twice to make sure that I don't walk behind him and that I should walk first. Who was I compared to what he was? But that was his Matthias. His Matthias was Matthias of Anova and Kovid. Ezam Mechubed HaMechabed Esabriyais. Many times there would be Talmidim that he had previously that would come to Shul on a Shabbos, and they always marched over with a Derech Eretz to Rabbi Shapiro to give him Shalom. And he would hold up his hand, he would sometimes like make a little show with them, that they can't reach his hand, and after they couldn't reach the hand, they would point to the Rav first. First you give Shalom to the Rav, and then you come to me. The Kachava, these were children that had no idea who they were. But that was his Metzias, his essence was a Metzias of Chinuch. He had the chinuch, the chanoich le'darkai was a chinuch for himself. Call you mechayov, and that's what we need to learn. We ask of the nifter, mechila, I ask on behalf of myself, the kehila, the community, and anybody else that wants to be yaitza, to ask mechila, we didn't give over the proper covet in their heritage, especially in the last tukufa, where it was hard to do so. And we ask him to be a Melitz Yaisher for the rabbits and for the whole Mishpacha, for the whole community in Gans Klal Yisrael. Rabbi Meir, second cousin of mine. What am I doing here? I know we didn't have any first cousins, so. We had this chus, learning the Shapiros. Now, Mishpacha, really Mishpacha, Mishpacha. I never met. He's telling Yeshiva and Chinuch, never say he's the best boy in the class. I can say publicly, I never met a finer person in my life. You encounter the yeshiva people, thousands and thousands of people. You tamachacham too. As we this Pittsburgh family, the Shapiro sent all the kids, kids off. the Yisrael Gadol, the Zayda, the Baba, the Yisrael and Cousin Bluma, sent their children to New York, starting at the age of six and a half, with no yeshiva in Pittsburgh. They're away from home. So the other ones were all the mayor. Eight now a house every single Shabbos. So I'm saying May, not Rabbi, I'm just too used to. Every single Shabbos until he got married, 1960, the first outing with the Ben the family to Baltimore. Mayor and Elizabeth, when they got married. Us, that couple was very, very special. And in 1965, my father was Nifta. I can't begin to tell you how many times Mayor would come visit my mother. And just sit with her and schmooze with her. Just sit. Tens and tens of times, Almana. We looked up to him as our big brother. What was not said about Rabbi Yankee was one thing. Rabbi Yankee relied on Rabbi Meir, Nechidach and Yanim, Veltz Bechanach. 
way, way ahead of his times. Today it's more positive chinuch. We grew up, maybe he was much older, but we grew up, chinuch was not as positive. It's putting him out like, he didn't like Yeshiva, many of us. For good reason. Maya never raised his voice. I once said to him once, Maya, could you ever yell in your life? Yell one time? It wasn't Shaykh. It wasn't him. His midas, the way he spoke to people. He got up every single time. The rub just spoke about it. He'd stand up. My nephews, much younger, he'd stand up. He'd say, I've been He stood up for everybody. Maya. I can say, I never heard him say a bad word. One of my regrets in life is he moved to Chicago. He used to be South Shore Yeshiva there. He moved to Chicago. I used to fly in for a fly right out. I also have a job. It's a regret not giving him enough time, but whatever I had a chance to speak to her mayor. Those Midas, those sterling Midas, through Tyra. It wasn't Stam Midas, through Tyra. That stub, him and Elizabeth built, was not Pasha. Look at the kids, they look, you're sort of all watching by for the grandchildren. From nowhere, Pittsburgh, we didn't have. Cousin Bluma, his mother understood. And Yasef, who's a Veltz Masvid of Yasef Shapiro, his father, understood. They want kids to be made tired. They sent them to New York to learn. Cousin Bluma would come every five weeks for a week. Every five weeks for a week, she would come. And she would, I think Esther, like you said, Rabbi Sam Weinberg was the oldest. She came, I think she was 10 years old. That was the oldest one that came. So I used to come out as a kinder, but I thought of something over Shabbos, I don't know if I'm right or I'm wrong, I thought about it a few years ago. He couldn't say a bad word, it wasn't Shaykh. What he meant to everybody was a Shaykh. He couldn't say a single bad word. I invited Yaakov Avinu was told by his mother that Yitzhak is preparing the brachas for Esau. The whole story, I'm not going into all the details. Yaakov says to his mother, Ula, you shame Yavi. What if my father t- touches me? And he sees I'm not, I'm not Yaakov. Yaakov, Anech Yishchalak. Is this sir? What's going to happen? Rivka agreed with that. And Rivka said, Okay. I think I uh, took the clothes, the Hamudais. And she put them on, on his hands, on his body. He put them on so he should, he should feel in case Yitzhak touches him. And of course, the great story happens. Yaakov goes in. And he says, Kum na'avi, ashikra Hashem lefanai. He speaks like Yaakov. And the famous words of Yitzchak, Akel kel Yaakov, yidayim yidei Yisuf. Always bothered me, the Ramban asked this question. There's a few truths in Why wasn't Yaakov worried about the fact that he's going to speak differently? The Ramban says one Thursday, you were twins. Different truths I give him a different, I'm a mag. Why wasn't he worried about it? I want to apply this to a mayor. You can talk, you know, something you talk up here in the office. You talk to a mayor, Sterling, Menchish Kite, Thomas Chachem, Erlich Kite, the Meg, the Meg. I hope. Yaakov was not afraid of the girl called Yaakov. It says, Medrash tells us that by love on Ichiba and Echib Ramos, Yaakov with Fashtana Ramos, Yaakov understood he could be. He can't do anything about his body. He has to look, he has to feel like he's not a Yishcholak. So please, the clothing he needed. He planned on going in there and speaking like Esav. Yoakum Avi. Speak like the grub Esav. That's what he planned on. I'll knock the way to knock on the door like Esav knocks on the door. I'll speak to my father like Esav. It's hard to still keep it up. I'm not going into that right now. I'm going to go and make you believe I'm Esav. He, he told you to do that. That was his plan. Until he came to the door. He couldn't. Uh, Papa, how are you? Welcome over here. I prepared food for you. He, took a cross. He's, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't get it out of his mouth. The whole mahus was Kaddish for Tyre. The whole mahus of Yaakov was Kaddish for He can't imitate. I can't just talk about an Esau. He can't. He can't. He planned on it, but he just couldn't do it. He took C's. It's Yaakov. Kael Kael Yaakov. He named the Esau. So I had to give Yaakov a little worried until he came to the door. He just couldn't do it. Once a mayor, the tired mayor. We can't vain him for a person of his age also. I don't know a person in the world in Chinuch 
He retired from Harry Grant for 40 years, and then I came to the dinner that time. When he retired from the, from, from, from uh, what he, he did the next number of years was like helping Shvacha kids. Well, he worked with the most difficult children after he retired. He used to speak to them on the phone, difficult children, I a blooper and talk about the cases he had. That was a mayor. Health and kinder. The schwerest of kinder in Chicago he worked with. Most difficult children. That was his life. A throwback. 60 years ago, they loved him. He was a South Street shooter before he came. Remember when he left at New York? Once the big brother is going, our big brother is going. My mother, remember, she felt it was such a shyness. Just took care of everybody. Our big brother, our best friend, that's what the main Shapiro was. Abe Shabench and Amano, I guess up the stack together, two of them built as Ashtug. The sons and Rebson Weinberg. As Ashtug, Ashtug before Ora. But her may, from on high, should keep an eye on his wonderful children, but Hillel, Naomi, of course, her husband, her husband. We may have a shy home, Mishpacha. How does one give cover to somebody who always pushed cover away? Someone who mamish ran from cover, and if ever somebody wanted to give my father cover, he would make a face and actually cringe from the thought. He would not want any recognition whatsoever. How many of you here would come over to my father to give a warm shomalech and he would stand up for you? And you would say, please, Rabbi Shapiro, don't get up for me. But this was his way. As the Mishnah says in Abbas Ben Zamer Aimer, he's Alma Chubad, Alma Chabir Sabrios. My father always was Machabir Sabrios. He refused any sort of honor for what he had accomplished unless it would benefit Eric Graham. This by no means meant that he did not know who he was, what he had accomplished, or what his kaifas were. As a young man one summer, years ago, my father started working as a counselor at Camp Monk. And the director, I had very little hopes for my father's success in general, but by the end of the summer, my father was offered the head counselor position in the coming year. My father always knew, he always knew that he would be in Chilif. He started his career working with Rabbi Yom Kamenetsky, Zephano Rocha, and the Yeshiva of South Shores was mentioned. My father told me there were only 37 children that were enrolled at the time, and by the time my father left, to move on to Airy Crown, close to 10 years later, there were over 170 children from grades kindergarten K through nine. My father shared with me that one year, a board member from the yeshiva of Salshur called him to meet with him at his home. And at that meeting, the man shared with my father the legal pad of paper that he had used to interview my father for the position of principal. And on it, Written in the margin were the, word, were, were the words, a real nevish. That was the initial assessment of my father. And even when he was accepted here for the position in 1964 at Airy Crown, my father told me that one of the interviewing board members commented that he felt my father was too idle for the job. Years ago, my father told me that this happened back in Pittsburgh. He saw a congregant in my Zadie show that was berating my grandfather and telling my grandfather about all the poor qualities he had and how displeased this fellow was with my grandfather as the rub. My grandfather patiently waited until the man was done and he asked him, is that your opinion of me? Because that is not my opinion of myself. My father told me But the lesson he learned from this was to know who you are, know your strengths, and don't be shaken by what other people say, and with siyata dishmaya and with time, things will fall into place and continue on in what you're doing. He shared with me one Shabbos morning while we were walking home from Shoal, 
an explanation in the words of Bari and Nefashos Rabbos with Hasoyna, to mean that Hashem created every person along with their individual shortcomings, and that even with their shortcomings, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave each and every one of them the ability to succeed. Everyone was created with the ability to meet the challenge of their chesroinus. This kaya helped my father remain in Chinuch at Airy Crown for 40 years, and then after being retired for just two weeks, he became the principal of Gesher HaTayra for another 10 years. Throughout the years, he had to make some very difficult decisions on many issues in the school. And as the post says, Tzadik HaTamar Yishoch, Ke'erez Balbanon Yisket, he knew when to bend as a date tree beneath the turbulent winds and com compromise, if necessary. And he also knew when to stand straight and tall like a cedar and not compromise under similar turbulent winds. He meant so much to so many people, and he touched so, so many lives. My father's main source of chinuch came by watching his father and the derech of life in his parents' home. He attributed his development to his mother in, a way, in the way that she focused on things in the home and the lessons she taught him about the important priorities of life. He revered his father and modeled his entire life after Zaidi. When learning in Yeshiva Torah Vadas, he accepted Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetzi Zichron Levocha as the Rabbi Muvok, and when needing to make major decisions in his life, or decisions at Airy Crown, he would always defer to the Rosh Hashiva Rabbi Yaakov. My father was not a man of many words. He was actually very, very measured in what he said and how he said it. This is something he learned from his father. My father was a gibor and watching what came out of his mouth. I can't recall him ever speaking a single word the Mishnah Novus Perik Dal Mishnah Gimel Yud Gimel Rabbi Shimon Oimer Shloish Kesar Mehem Kesar Tayra Kesar Kuhuna Bekesar Machu Bekesar Shem Tayv Oila Al Gevayim. There are three crowns: one of Tayra, one of Kuhuna, one of royalty. But the most exalted crown of them all is the crown of a good name, the crown you wear because people speak kindly about you, the way people say how fine your midos are. The Tiferes Yisrael comments on the Mishnah, why is it that the Keser Shem Toiv is elevated above all the others? It's up the Tiferes Yisrael. It's because Keser Shem Toiv had to be earned. It was something that came through your own yigiya and hard work, while the other Kesarim were gifts from Hashem. My father's gvur extended to how he managed his Yisurim. He was diagnosed with arthritis, when he was in his mid-30s and needed to take 16 aspirins a day, which ultimately caused multiple ulcers over the years. He had open-heart surgery caused by the many steroids that he had to take daily and had operations to straighten his extremities. This never stopped him from dancing at a chasana, to be misamea chasana kala, or standing and walking the long hallways of Airy Crown. He even modified his handshake to use both of his hands so that when someone would shake his hands, he could soften the pressure with the other hand. No one really knew ever. No one ever really knew the level of constant pain my father was in. These were Yusurim Shalava. And when asked, Abba, how do you feel today? He would always respond, Bechesed. Or he would say, today I feel a little better, but never a negative word. My father loved Airy Crown. He had great respect and admiration for the Rebbeim, the Moros and teachers, and he loved the children. Many times he told me that a large portion of his success here at Erie Crown was due to the support he received from the Balabatim of the school. He valued their friendship greatly. He loved to stand outside greeting each child as they came to school to start their day in davening or learning Torah. He would stand there saying good morning to each child by name and say to them, have a great day of learning. Who can ever forget his weekly Friday morning greetings of our Guten Erev Shabbos? What time is Lich mentioned today? And what is the name of this week's Sedra? He was so happy when any former Talmud or Talmido would come over to him and say, hi, Rabbi Shapira, I'm so-and-so. My, fa 
My father's eyes would light up with a broad smile and he would exclaim, oh, how are you? And how are your parents? He loved to see his Talmudim grow. It gave him tremendous nachas. As a Zaidi, he took special interest in each grandchild. He would always inquire, how was their learning? To those that were teachers, he would ask, he would ask how was teaching going? With each grandchild, he wanted to know how they were doing with whatever they were busy with. It brought him tremendous nachas, and he loved seeing each and every one of you grow in Yiddishkeit. He would say, keep doing what you're doing and keep steiging. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank Diane First for assisting us daily in childless that were Nagea Dina Nefashos. Being able to turn to you eased our tsar. The entire staff at Evanston Hospital, while my father was in the private room or in the ICU, their care, compassion, and respect for a dignified rabbi did not go unnoticed. Their morning visits to the rabbi to receive his brachos when they started their shifts was a tremendous show of respect and another example of how my father touched everyone. Thank you to Dr. Herzger Greenblatt, whose devotion to every nuance of my father's care was done with such scrutiny and love. Your hishtadlos to do anything and everything possible for my father will be, re will be remembered. You treated my father as your own Rebbe. Dr. Baruch Zucker guided and advised us step, every step of the way. He spoke to us with great concern over my father's well-being. Dr. Bellum, who was my father's pulmonologist, whose detail and compassion to my father's care meant a great deal to him and to us. And we greatly appreciate the patience you had with each of our questions. Thank you all that are here and listening. for davening for my father's recovery, and all the tehillim that was said by all the Talmudim of our crown here in Chicago and across the world. Naomi. Thank you for coming in, taking care of Abba, and especially this past week, staying with him by his side throughout the night. Ima, the greatest Akara Satov goes to you. It would have been impossible, impossible, for Abba to have accomplished all that he did if you were not there supporting him in every single way. I remember the speeches you would help Abba write preparing for the Ari Crown dinners. You tended to Abba's every need for the past 60 plus years. The physic you provided him allowed him to become stronger and continue to have Arisa Kaddish. May he be blessed, revenge, with good health, together with all of us, and continued Yiddish and Hachas. Whenever our family would travel to Baltimore or Pittsburgh for young Taivim, just as we were about to pull out of the driveway, my father would say, And we would all answer, Amen. And we'd be on our way. Abba, life be shalom. And Matzliach Zayn Amen. Abba, on behalf of the entire Mishpacha, we ask you from Achila if we did, if we ever did not show you enough covet, especially during these last few difficult weeks. Abba, it's been an, an honor to be your son. An honor to have you as his aide to our children, and an honor to have you at our, the head of our Shabbos table. All the covet you ran away from, you left behind for us. Rabbi Shmuel Dishon, Yibod Alachayim, a chavar of my father, once commented that the wording of Kaddish speaks of Yizkadal Yizkadal Shemei Rabbah, exalting Hashem's great name. This is Dafka said when someone is nifter. Since we are all but Salam Elikim, and while we are alive, and through our Maising Tovim and Derech Achayim of Torah, during our lives we are Mekadesh Shem Shemayim. But when a person is nifter, that Yizkad losing Yizkad Shus is somehow Kavayochol diminished. My father's lifetime was a Kiddush Shem Shemayim. And may father be a bit made tzioshe to our family, for all of his Ari Crown family, for all his Talmidim and Talmidos in the city of Chicago, 
And when we all be zoicha to the day when together we will experience Yehei, Shmei, Rabba, Mubarach, Le'olam, Ole'ome, Omayu. Bila ha'mavaz l'netzach l'moch ha'ashem alakim dimer me'al k'ponim. Forty-eight years ago, thirty-eight years ago, I came to Chicago for the first time, the Shidduch, and I met my wife to be. And I remember we had a conversation, and I said that I heard that your father is a very respected man here in Chicago. She told me everybody in Chicago knows my father is a tzaddik. She says you could ask the mechanic. You could ask the janitor in Ari Crown. You could ask the person who mows the lawn and anybody else, and they'll tell you what a tzaddik is. After living as a son for 38 years, I saw it every single time we got together. It was never a time we were together when he didn't tell me many times, thank you, I'm sorry for Nothing. And the last time I saw him was two weeks ago when he left our house and I went outside to say goodbye to him. He was in an ambulance on the way to the airport and I had a feeling it was perhaps the last time I would see him. And of course, his last words to me were, thank you for everything. My father-in-law was a great giver, a very generous, no saint. He wasn't a rich man, but he gave something which is perhaps what most people need most desperately. Recognition, covered, simas lev, understanding, Nobody sat with my father-in-law and left the conversation not feeling like a mensch, not feeling like a gavar not feeling like somebody who deserved attention. Most of his years, he and Tabodul Chaim Toivin, my mother-in-law, devoted their strength and their concern and their efforts to Chinuch, Yal De Klai Yisrael. One of Abbasah talks about a person who was considered the greatest Malamit Tanoikis in his time, Rav Shmuel Bashilas. The Gemara says that Rav once met him walking in a garden and he told him, how can you be here? You've abandoned your charges. What are you think supposed to be taking care of the children? Rav Shmuel Bashilas said, for 13 years I haven't left him. This is my first break. I'm taking a walk in the garden. And believe me, I wasn't Masih Das even over here. I'm thinking about them even here. I spent many, many excursions with my father-in-law, visiting parks. We spent Cholomoy together many, many times, and he was very happy to go to the zoo with the kids and to various parks. And I can tell you, I don't think he was Masih Das. I don't think he took his mind off of his chinuch any of that time. If we would talk, he would talk about what's going on in school. His greatest pride was to tell me children were shagging. They started a Mishma say that kids are staying after school and learning a little bit. How many kids they were able to send to yeshiva? How many kids became, we we'll never use the word kids, by the way. He was from a generation that, that was a tray for it, children. How many children grew up and became Tamide Chachomim, became Chashuva Balabat, became Bali Chesed, became accomplished? It was a tremendous pride for him. I don't think he had any other machshavas that entered his mind during those years of Chinuch. Of course, his children, his grandchildren, but I think they played second role to his concern with his Talmudim. There's a sefer called Talmud Devara. Talmud Devara discusses 
the picture of a true Oy Hashem. It was written by one of the great Mekubalim, but it's not a Sefer of Kabbalah, it's a Sefer of Musa. And he describes how a person can emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu and every one of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Midas, as much as we can understand that. And he talks about one Midah, he calls it Midah Shatiferes. In HaKadosh Baruch Hu's spheres, there's a Midah called Tiferes. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu transmits his Kedusha down to this world in different levels. One of the levels is Midah Shatiferes. The Talmud Torah says, what is the need of Tiferes? The need of Tiferes is a link between the higher levels of Kedusha and the lower. And the need of Tiferes looks up and is macabre from the higher levels of Kedusha and at the same time looks down and transmits the Kedusha down to this world. He says, a person who wants to emulate a Kedush Baruch Hu with the need of Tiferes has to have that need. He has to be able to sit and look with awe at the source of Kedusha and at the same time, look down with a smile and transmit Kedusha to the lower levels. My Shvez, the of the embodied the Midah of Tiferes. Anybody who knew him knew, as was mentioned, that he walked with the, the most duknam of his Rebbeim and his parents in front of him. He never said a daya, an opinion, which wasn't based on what it was recovered from his Rebbeim. He told me many times that every issue that came up in school, he would consult with Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky when he was alive, when Rav Yaakov was nifter. I recall him telling me several times he called Rav Chenech Leibowitz, Rav Chaim Leibowitz, Rav Chaim Leibowitz, Rav Chaim Leibowitz, to ask them the Das Torah to do. And he held on with awe, and of course his parents who he revered and he respected beyond description. And he took that Histaklus Lamala to the Kedusha that he got from and at the same time, he was able to look down to the modern door that was really a different door that he grew up in and transmit the Kedusha, transmit the Torah, transmit Avas HaTorah, transmit Yir Shemayim to that door. I once accompanied him to Kolomai. He had a minion for the boy from Ari Crown. And you saw it, Mamish, the minion was with tremendous Derek It was not one peep, not one word of talking in the minion. And every child came and they had Shacharis and Musaf. And then afterwards there was a raffle. And he raffled off, I don't remember anymore, a basketball and a baseball and whatever it was. And he was able to switch from being that dogma of Lamala, Lamala for them to look up to and learn from. And then become one of the boys almost and raffle off and enjoy the fact that one boy won the basketball, one boy the other toy. And bring them, be Makar of them like that and be the link that connected them to the Gedolim and the Kedusha that preceded him. His responsibility for Chinuch and his respect for Das Torah and for Gedolah Yisrael, I think, explains why, after 40 years of being the principal here in Ari Crown, finally retired. The truth is, I believe he wanted to retire even a few years before that, and the board begged him to stay on for a few years. And finally, he didn't have the crisis. He was over 70 already, and uh, he felt that he had to retire. And like Hillel mentioned, two weeks later, he took on a new task. Yashar Atayra, with its difficulties, he was used to being a principal of five to six hundred students, and now he's a principal of 25, but just as difficult. And why did he do it? A combination between a feeling of Akharayis for every single Nisham and Chayisho, and because Rosh Hashiva, Ram Chaim Levin, Zohar Rafa asked him to do it. He said, Rosh Hashiva said, I have to do it, I'm going to do it. A man who made a conscious decision that he can't anymore, he's old, he needs to take it easy, Rosh Hashiva said, that was it. Like Hillel mentioned, he was Zaytha to Eishis Chaya, who looked after his every need, especially his medical needs. Since his mid-30s, serious, I, from the time that I knew him, I don't think there was a day that went by that he wasn't in pain, literally in pain. How are you? It was always like Hillel said, Aste Hashem, Rav Hashem. If he said, coming along, that was already similar. Things weren't so were terrible. The last few weeks, spent the week in our house, my mother -in -law did not leave his side for a second, not a second in the hospital at home. With the, the treatments and the shots and the intravenous. 
and his children, my wife, and Hillel, she if you, who were devoted to him in every way. He had tremendous pride in his children, he had tremendous pride in Simcha and Nachas from his grandchildren, all the Neitaira, all the Hashem. It's a shame he should be a male it's Yaisha and the Mishbach, the whole Kehila, all the Klai Yisrael. I'd like to ask him Mechila personally and on behalf of the whole family. I'm sure we did not give him the cover that he deserved. It's difficult for me to process the fact that we're standing here today at Sadie's Levaya. At the risk of repeating things that were said already, I repeat them because they're true, that those are the feelings that I have, those are the feelings I'm sure other people have also. The Mishnah says, as Uncle Hill mentioned, you know, who is a person who has COVID? Who is a person who gets COVID? Someone who's mechabe de sabrius. Someone who is not looking to get COVID, someone who's not doing, projecting his own image, showing off what he has, but he's looking to be mechabed others. Someone who's running to get COVID is not a mechobit. Adrab, he's a mevuzah. It says by David HaMelech, David HaMelech danced in front of the Oroi and his wife, Michal Bas Shol, had a taina that Manich Badayoyim it's not befitting for the king to reveal himself, to show his emotions. David HaMelech answered, in front of the Oren is different, but the idea that to reveal, to show, to show off, to expose oneself, to give your, to, 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 to not conceal your inner panemius, is a bizarre, it's a chsaran in Kabbalah. My Zaidi was the most private person. As was mentioned, his feelings, his physical feelings, his emotions, he didn't show it. He wasn't looking that anyone should know what he did. He wasn't looking that anyone should know about him. Everything, everything was about other people. He came from a mishpacha of Gidoy Lemamesh, the extended Bender Berman mishpacha. Gidoy Le Torah, many generations, cousins, my uncle, my uncles of Mesh Shemin, Matchus Shapiro, Matcha Weinberg. And you wouldn't know it. You met my Zaidi, and he was a regular person. He wouldn't say anything about himself. You wouldn't know where he came from. You wouldn't know how chashev, how much chashivas he was carrying with himself. He wasn't the sugya. He wasn't what we were talking about. Everything was about other people. He would be mechabed me. He would be mechabed my children. He would ask, how are they doing? It was always, what can I do for you? What can I do for the children? would come Cholamoyed, we would come to Chicago every year, and he would be busy with us, taking care of us, 
making sure we had a good time. He would bring us here to Ari Crown to this room. He would show us the different activities that they had in the school for the Talmidim and Talmidas, and he would enjoy that we should get the opportunity to use and enjoy those activities. He would come for Yantif to our house. Early in the morning, he would be out. He would go daven. He would come home. He would, he would stop on the way in the grocery. And he would be careful to buy this one for that one and this thing for that person. And he knew exactly what everybody wanted. And he would ask, and if you wanted something else, the next day you got something else. I remember, if I remember correctly, once in the Adas, on some chastoyro, they had given out the kibudim. I, if I remember correctly, they gave it out to Haresa, and a few people didn't get it. And Mazedi demanded that they give, they go again and make sure that every, the few people who weren't, didn't get that key, but somebody paid for it. Somebody bought the key and gave it to whoever they gave it to. But some people didn't get it. And he went and he noticed that those people didn't get it. And he made sure that everybody got the cover that they needed. He was mechab with my grandmother tremendously. We recently had a birthday party for my grandmother. And she expressed her akar satayv to Rabbanu Shalom and her appreciation of her successes in life. And she mentioned how proud she was of her children, my Uncle Hillel, for everything that he does, for everything that he accomplishes. And of my mother, Shlita, for everything she's accomplished over many, many years, and they've affected many, many people. And she expressed her, her hakara and her appreciation for Zaidi. And I remember specifically she mentioned that he was mechabed me tremendously my whole life. The Morris says, Oyavok Gufa, Mechab de Yoisa Migufa. Mamish. This is who he was. Mechabed everyone else. Yoisa Migufa and Mamish. And the Mishnah says, Ezel Mechubed, Hamechabed is Abrius. And he got tremendous. Other people were Mechabed him. Rabbi first mentioned, and Rabbi Bender mentioned. Anoshim Gidoilim were Mechabed him. I went with him in Eretz Yisrael to the Berman Mishpacha, Shlema Berman's Rabbit Center, Chaim Berman. And they, they treated him with such their acherets, with such, and he, and he, he was he pushed embarrassed. And somebody was Mechabed him by a chasana, somebody would come over, he, he, he would, my uncle Hill mentioned, he would cringe, he would keep shoot, he would be embarrassed that somebody was, he, he didn't know where to put himself. It was also mentioned the mission of Kesser Shem Toy. Those two Mishnahis really, unfortunately, make a connection between the two Mishnahis. The first Mishnah says, Is there a Chacham? Is there a Gibor? Is there a Asher? And then is there a Mechubit? Second Mishnah says, Three Ksarm, Kesser Shem, Kesser Toyro, which is Kenegid Chacham. Kesser Malchus, which is Ashirus, Kesser Kohuna, says Shaykhas Kesser Gibor. Then there's a Kesser Shem Toy, Ha'oila Al Kulam. When I would meet people from Chicago, and I would say, You're from Chicago? Oh, my mother's from Chicago. Shapiro, which is oh, Rabbi Shapiro. And I got covered. I got covered because he was my Zaydi, and they were Machab in him. And they were. Mechabed me, they looked at me with respect because of who, where I was coming from. When he retired, this Kesser Shem he was a principal for 40 years. And at the time when he retired, I remember my grandmother mentioning to me how proud she was that he was principal for so long. And she said many other principals in other places were not able to do that. 
It's only because of Zaydi's cheshivas and his kasher shaynpeh that he was able to remain a principal as long as he was. He had children in Einikoch of Talmidim. He was mechadik. Abchin of Ramushu mipicho mipizarachom mipizarachom. And he was mechabed them, and he was mechabed the Torah. Rabbi Yehuda says that someone who is mechal Hashem Shemayim has to be mekadosh Hashem Shemayim. His lashon is im Yazreu Hashem Yisparach lekadosh Torah so ineged b'nei Adam. If the person is zeichet to be mekadosh Torah so ineged b'nei Adam, will he be able b'nei Adam to teach people gvuras Hashem uchvoid hadar malchusay? That's what. His chinuch was about, not about, everything was about the Rabbanu Shalom, everything was about the Cheshiva Satoira that he had seen, that he was Makabal, and he was able to give it over, he was able to give it over with Taharasa, because he had no personal Nagiyas, he had nothing in it for himself, he gave over the Torah the way he heard it, the way he saw it, and he was able to say it over Mamash, and that's why it went over so well, because it wasn't his understanding, and it wasn't his way of saying it, and it wasn't his idea, this was Mamash the Messer, Satoira, Midor, Dor. I feel mechubed, I am mechubed, to be an Enekel. It's difficult, as I said, to process and fathom that we're standing here now. I want to ask Bechila on my behalf, on behalf of all day in the Koch, we would not mechabed him Karoi. He didn't let us be mechabed him Karoi. We didn't dive in enough. We ask Bechila for everything. Yizich Reboruch, Vila Mavis Lanetzach, Amoch HaShem, Ekim Dimam, Al Kapon, and Yerim Aramim. When I was a child, the Manal in my school was a broad man with a big orange beard and a booming voice, Rabbi Weinberg al -Vashon. And I could not fathom how my Zaydi could be a principal. He was so soft-spoken and so mild-mannered, so edel. I, I, I could not wrap my head around how he could be a Manal. It took me a long time to realize that there was a tremendous gvura in his silence. He was quiet not because he didn't have what to say, and he was mild-mannered not because he didn't have a chiyas and a geshmak. I remember one particular story. We were sitting around the table in our house, and someone was saying, one of my brothers had read an account of how that kafas went by the Satmarov. He danced and they danced around him and they danced in front of him, a whole account. We were discussing it for a while, maybe 20 minutes. And then it occurred to someone that my Zaydi was in Williamsburg in those days. Maybe he had been there. So I asked him, were you there? He said, yeah, I was there many times. He didn't feel the need to speak up if nobody asked him. He had what to say, but he didn't say it unless it was necessary. That was the gvura in his silence. We find by Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu is ish tam yeshev ayalim. Yaakov Avinu is ish emes. And yet, multiple times in Yaakov Avinu's life, he was forced to be a ramai. The ace of Yaakov is a pamayim, and with love on, it was. Derech Ramois, Achav Ani Ramois. Why Dafka did Yaakov Avinu have to be tested this way? Yaakov Kamenetsky, St. Grace Rebbe, points out that Avram Avinu was similarly like that. Avram Avinu was Midas Achesed, and he was tested with Achzarius, 
Akedas Yitzchak, he was tested with Achzorius, and with Lachlacha to leave his father, he was tested with Achzorius. Because Sadiqim are tested the exact opposite of their their Tchunas HaNefesh. And that's the gods, when they could go against their Tchunas HaNefesh, what is necessary. And Zaidi was naturally a very quiet person, a still person. But he rose to be a leader, and he, he he stood up when he had to stand up, and he had backbone when he had to have backbone. And that's his guru. And he knew how to rise to every situation, but he also knew never to lose himself in every situation, and know how to behave in every situation. And Mr. Sashon writes in the first parak. Everything is a, is a test to a person. A person, everything is a test to a person, every situation. Somebody remains strong in every situation, that's how the mashalim. he was. The, he, his midas were perfect in every situation, as was mentioned when he was bizar. But even before that, we saw him in many different situations. We saw him. He taught us. He used to lie on the floor and play monopoly with us on Yom Tov, and he taught us that even when we're being competitive, there's a way to be. The way he acts, even when they're competitive. And we went on Chalmayr trips and we had fun. But there's a way that a Yid acts. The Gemara says, People should love Hashem because of you. How is that? You should learn and you should have a Rebbe. He should deal honestly with people and speak quietly. Look how beautiful are the ways of somebody who, who learned and had a Rebbe. In every situation, all of us in, in, wherever it was in the grocery store, in in, in, in every single situation, it was an opportunity to, to make a kid Hashem. People, strangers, told me afterwards when I went to the grocery store in Brooklyn. And then he left. He said, "Your grandfather. I don't even know his name." He made a ration on people. This is the part. The ish has shalom in every situation. And that's the legacy that he left us. Success of Elisha, Roya, Ruhum Etzayik. Elisha saw his Rebbe being taken from him, Elio, and he cried out, Avi, Avi, Rechav Yisrael of Farashav, my father, my 
Father. More valuable are you to call Yisrael than a chariot and its horsemen. And he didn't see him anymore. I don't know if I'll be able to share anything now that hasn't been said. But I'm going to add an ingredient that may change how it's heard. Mitzayik, a deep, bitter, and painful cry of a Talmud. When the news broke, Erev Shabbos. I believe the world shook with the collective tzaka that exploded from the hearts of Talmidim, Talmidois. Earlier this afternoon, I stood at this microphone as a head of school. Now, Rebbe, I stand here as one of thousands of Talmidim, Talmidois, Rabbeim, Moros, teachers, members of the Ari Crown devastated family who find ourselves suddenly without you. Last Tuesday, I visited you, Rebbe, in your, in your, your Shekhinah-saturated hospital room. And I said to you, I owe you my life, and I love you. And you looked at me with that classic look what are you talking about? And now I would like to explain. Now is my time, Rebbe. For almost 50 years, you've been Rebbe. And over Shabbos, this past Shabbos, I closed my eyes and I thought back over the years and thought about the treasure that you were to all of us. And oddly, I couldn't remember much of anything that you said in a traditional teaching way. Lectures, schmoozing, discourses. Until I realized that your chinuch to us was transmitted powerfully by your very self, your manner of speech, your walk, your tone, your inflection, your eyes, your look, your intention expressed by every action that you took. Literally, your physical existence was the embodiment of your essence and your essence was healing. Every minute of your 40 years as principal, and I must say, it didn't end with 40 years of principal, and your 17 plus years as principal emeritus, your very essence imbued Ari Krani Budi's goal with its pillars of existence and filled the hearts and souls of every student privileged to be able to say, I'm an Ari Crowner. And what were those pillars? Humbly, I will suggest, first and foremost, was Emmis. It was your driving force upon which everything else flowed. Not merely the MS of not saying Sheker. Of course, 
that was obvious. But your authentic Tyras Emes values and the outlook that you received from your parents, and from your Rebbeim, Rabbi Yaakov Zetzal, you fearlessly and sometimes very lonely, single-handedly clung to the gold standard as far as you were concerned, the only standard to do the will of the Bayre. It wasn't shtick. It was authentic. Let the chips fall where they may. Detractors, I know you had, but so be it. You told me many, many times, don't be afraid of doing the right thing. It's a small example, perhaps, but Rebbe, this made a huge impression on me. I remember when I was a Rebbe, you were very mocked that davening chakras should be as quick as possible. Because Talmudim have to get to learning. They need to daven, but they need to get to learning. And breakfast should be as quick as possible. You're mocked on every minute that the learning should take place. And yet, different programs, raising money for this chesed, doing this, selling popcorn, it was, or it was frozen ice, flavored ice programs in which the boys and girls came and they bought things for pennies and quarters and that money was collected for tzedakah. Took place during the Moody Kodesh part of the day. And the Rebbeim wondered, would it be so bad if some of these programs took place in the afternoon? Does it have to come out of the learning? And I had the chutzpah to ask Rebbe, what was pshat? Makbid on every minute. Short breakfast. And he said, Ali, Talmidim need to know chesed is kodesh too. Talmidim need to know that that's what the Rebbeim and the Mor stand for as well. That's the emis. People are going to complain. It was the classic shrug that said it all. People will complain. People will always complain. Emes is Emes. Shalom. Rebbe, you were a champion of Shalom. Shalom in the school, Shalom in the community. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. But not simply lack of fighting or discord, but the type of shalom of Ava, the Achva, the shalom, the race, shalom that was built on emes and love. Rabbi, you were superhuman in your sensitivity and your thought to, to show love to all. How many times did Rebbe travel to New York and come back with cheese Danish for the, for the office staff? How many phone calls that people received unexpectedly? How did you remember that it was my father's yard site? How many beaker choilim? How many bar mitzvahs did you walk through in the snow when it was painful for you to take a step, let alone walk blocks and blocks to bar mitzvahs? Somebody just shared with me the other, over Shabbos. There was a snowstorm by his son's bar mitzvah. Rebbe couldn't come. But he mowed his Shabbos, he dug his car out in the snow to be able to drive to the house to leave a gift by the door for the bar mitzvah bacher. The incredible thoughtfulness it was mind boggling. I would watch you, Rebbe, and I couldn't get over how thoughtful and how sensitive. There was a story 
that I want to share. When I think of my Rebbe, this story just comes back like it was yesterday. It was the Washington, D.C. trip. I was in eighth grade. Rebbe's Emmis made sure that every minute of that trip was to the used fully, running, 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 go to the next thing, the monument, to the next thing, to this museum, to the next, to those, every second to be used. And I show them that the boy should have, the girl should have wasted time in D.C. And we got onto the bus towards the end of the day. A day of running that started at five o'clock in the morning. And only later did I understand Rebbe didn't sleep a wink. So it's not like he got up at five o'clock in the morning. Exhausted. As we got on the bus and all the children filed on and found their seats mostly by the back of the bus, because that's where children sit. I sat down and I had an angle view. I saw directly on an angle. Rebbe, I saw you. And you put your head against the window of the, of the side of the bus. You were so much pain. You were shaking. Your hands were shaking. It was so obvious how much pain you were in. And then you lifted your head and you caught, a, you caught that I was looking at you. And you broke into a smile and you said to me, do you think everybody wants ice cream? Let's go get ice cream. I'll never forget that moment. And every time in later years when I would shoyle Eitzel and speak to Rebbe, your finishing comment was always, always, Ellie, don't forget to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. MS Shalom. And then as everybody spoke about COVID, there's absolutely nobody that was in your league of how to be Mechabe. But it was a COVID that was born from MS. It's because the emis, your emistical look at life saw the big picture of how this is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's world and your anivis flowed from that because it's not about me. It's about the Bari It's not about me. And your Behab and others because they were the human dignity for all. But it wasn't just for people. It was for places, the school. Who in Ari Crown doesn't remember seeing Rebbe bend down and pick up a piece of litter from the floor? A tissue, a wrapper. It's covered for the Makkum. For things. Rebbe walked into a base medish, and if there was a, a sefer of Nevi'im on top of a sefer of Chumash, he knew he was going to put it in the right order. Chas Shalom, if there was a, a, a Lamude Chol Sefer on top of a Lamude Kari Sefer, you saw a shudder as he adjusted what was appropriate. His covenant wasn't shtick. It was emis. Many have mentioned, many have mentioned the fact that he would stand up for anyone who came to him, anyone, no matter their age, certainly his covet for Talmud HaChomim was supreme. But his covet where everyone, including children, he would stand up for them. In his older years, it was painful. You almost didn't want to come over to you, Rebbe, because you knew you were going to stand up. And everybody said, please, 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 don't stand up. And he stood up. But as I understood and got to learn my Rebbe, it was obvious. It wasn't just because that's what I did. 
It wasn't just because this is a minute I began years ago and how can I stop it now? I've been doing this my whole life. This was his life. To ask him to not stand up, you may have well been asking him to die. This was his existence. This was who he was. You gave Aitza with a tremendous sense of coffee for the person who was asking you, Aitza, with Anivus, and I was the recipient of that, particularly as I came into the position of principal of Hari Crown. And I particularly think, in my opinion, this is one of your greatest, greatest feats. Think about it. For 40 years to give Leib and Nefesh blood, sweat, and tears to build a school and walk away, a lesser person would be forgiven to do it with a little bit of aloofness. A lesser person would be forgiven to give it over to the next person with not the greatest encouragement and warmth. It's not simple to have somebody else sit in your seat. It's not simple to walk away. He passed it over to me with nothing but warmth and encouragement. He was in my corner 100% and wanted to see me succeed with every fiber of his being. I remember shaking my head in disbelief the first year that I was, I was in the role as principal. And he called the office, not me. He had my cell phone number. Rebbe, you had my number. He didn't call my cell phone number. He called the secretary to ask permission to come in and get something from Rabbi Samber's office. When he showed up, I said, Rebbe, this is your office. You don't need permission. Would have none of that. Rabbi Samberg, this is your office. This is yours. And he was there for me. One of the first bits of aid of Rebbe that you gave me was when someone asks you a question, you're not an emergency room doctor. You don't need to answer on the spot. It's a gaiva to show them that you're so all-knowing to give them an answer on the spot. Wait, think it through. The, the question deserves a thoughtful response. Sleep on it, wait, and then give them an answer. That's the Bacovedic way of giving someone an answer to their question. About four weeks before Rebbe was nifter, I called Rebbe with a very sensitive Chinuch Shiloh. I saved my best for Rebbe. It was a very delicate Shiloh. In a classic form, Rebbe's response, it's a very difficult question. I need to think about it. I'll get back to you. And I didn't hear back. And that was my greatest confirmation that Rebbe was really sick. Rebbe was really sick if he wasn't getting back to me. And when I visited Rebbe four weeks, almost four weeks later, last Tuesday, I came in late into the hospital room. Rebbe, you were lying there, eyes closed labored breathing. Rebbe, you looked so sick, so weak. And Rebbe Hillel told you, Abba, Rebbe Samber is here. And you opened your eyes just a bit and you started to 
say something that I couldn't hear. You were so weak. And I put my ear to your mouth and I couldn't believe what you were saying. I've been thinking about your question. I've been thinking about your question and you proceeded to answer me. It was so hard for you to talk, but that's how important it was. I've been thinking about your question. This is the tzaka for all the students of Ari Crown that ever walk through these halls. Our pain is to lose the builder, the, the architect of the pillars of this school. Our Nechama Rebbe is that you did such a tremendous job with imbuing those pillars into this school that they will last the Netzach Nitzachim. Every child, every child who will go through this Be'ezus Hashem will feel those pillars. Emes, Shalom, Kovod. Now, Rebbe, do you understand? I owe you everything. I love you. Please be a Melis Yeshe for your Mishpacha, for the whole Ari Crown family. El mole da chamim, shoy chayim, ba'am shoy mim. Amitzei minuchon ilchoyno, al kan chay ashchino. Ima alois kidoi shimu toilim, ke zoyalo lo kiya mazirim. Es nishmas Rameyer ben Arav Yosef Sholach le Yoilomoy Ba'avur Shemishpachtoy Yitain tztoko Badas koras nishmosoy Began Eden Tehei menuchosoy Lochein ba'alo rachamim Yastireyu Viseisel knofo Ve'oy lo miyim V'yitzroil v'yitzor achayim Es nishmosoy Adoinoy hunachalosoy V'yonuach v'yisholoy Mal mishkovoy V'noy malomey This concludes the Levi at the school. The crew will be at Bet Shemesh at Eretz Chaim Cemetery in Eretz Yisrael. Tuesday, approximately 11.30, will be a live hookup information on our website. The family will be sitting Shiva at 6833 Kedzi Avenue, apartment 315. Shachris will be at 7.30 in the morning in Mincha at 4.10. Um, Hillel will be going to Eretz Yisrael. We'll be back Wednesday morning, but they'll still have Minyanim at the Shiva house. Please remain standing as we escort the Aaron from the, from the school. We'll have all the grandsons act as pallbearers as we go out. And for those who be want to lava the Aaron, we'll be going uh, left on Canton and then around on Elm Street. <laughs>